Everybody, welcome to Words with Friends Live. I'm your host, Tristan Cunningham. Are you ready to have some fun? I said, are you ready to have some fun? Whoa, sorry. It's a, it's a bad habit. I also work as a mobile party DJ, and I'm sorry. But right now, we're going to play a game and see if your learnings can lead to some earnings. Huh? First, I'd like to give a shout out to the three men known as the godfathers of artificial intelligence. Yashua Bengio, Jeffrey Hinton, and Jan LeCun. Today, they were given the Turing Award, which is the Nobel Prize of the computing world. And hopefully, they each received a statuette hefty enough to fight off the swarms of killer robots they helped create. Good luck. All right, just a quick reminder, you have only four more days to complete the Hunt for Luck solo challenge. Everybody needs a little luck, right? So after this, go knock down some word masters, starting with Marty Maps and ending with Odd Leprechaun. Get that bronze mystery box and special badge while well, you can. Okay, this is how we do it in this game. I give you 12 questions, three possible answers. From the time I start talking, you'll have 10 seconds to tap the right answer. When you feel your phone vibrate, that's your three second warning. If you get all 12 questions correct, we'll hook you up with part of that $5,000 jackpot. Huh? Okay, to the game, that's it. Now hook up to Wi-Fi so you can see me shimmer and away we go. You ready? Let's play. In accordance with tradition, it all starts with our words with friends, a word of the day. Now. I urge you to answer this correctly. I think you'll find it stimulating. All right, question number one. Which is a definition of Philip? Meaningless talk, a gazelle, or stimulator urge? Okay, besides the right answer here, Philip used to also mean to do this. Now today we call that a flick or a snap. And it's, a, it's, it's good that we don't call it Philip anymore because we all have had that friend Philip who had no rhythm. And it's hard to say, um, hey, Philip, can, can, can you Philip on beat? Philip, please. It's the last time I go out with Philip. All right, the correct answer is stimulate or urge. Now, over time, the definition of Philip evolved from finger flicking to the figurative meaning of urging or encouraging someone. Now. Did you get that one wrong? I handed you that one on a platter. But there's no shame 
in this game. So keep playing in spectator mode towards that 15-point mystery box that's just full of goodness. Stay with me. All right, question number two. The Second Amendment guarantees the right of the people to blank. One, two, or three. Now, verbally, it's pretty important to make sure you are using the correct bear and the correct emotion while saying it. Like, if there is an actual bear, you gotta say bear! And not like, bear, B-A-R-E. Because people would be like, oh, right on. And then they take off their clothes, and then they get eaten by the actual bear. So it's, it's, it's very important. You're welcome. All right, the correct answer is keep and B-E-A-R, bear arms, uh, number one. Let's see how many people got that, 11,000, very nice. Now, as Americans, we have no guaranteed right to bear, B-A-R-E, arms. In fact, if you're going for a job interview and you've got one of those ride or die tattoos right here, you might want to think about wearing a sweater. Just saying. All right, question number three. Which two words create one real word when combined? A and lot, play and write, or with and hold? Okay, if you thought A and lot could be written as one word, you were wrong. A lot wrong. Play and write can be combined into one word, but you've got to put a W in between them. That leaves with and hold, which of course smoosh together to make withhold. Now how else could we withhold fun stuff like love or social security taxes? Or the correct answer, which is with and hold. Let's see how many people got with and hold. 8,400, very nice. Now what's more fun than combining two words into one? Making a portmanteau, which is blending the words together, like making a breakfast and lunch into brunch, or hungry and angry into hangry, which, if I am ever hangry, I advise you to watch out. Not a pretty scene. All right, question number four. Marie Curie was the first woman to win which prize? A Nobel Prize, a Caldecott Medal, or the Stanley Cup? Now, the Caldecott Medal goes to the artist of the best illustrated children's book. The Stanley Cup is won by the champs of the National Hockey League. Well, it's very possible that a Polish woman could be a children's book illustrator. It's, it's a little less likely that she could defeat the Montreal Canadiens for the cup, but hey, I never underestimate a strong woman. I have a lot in my life and they can do a lot. All right, the results are in the correct answer is a Nobel Prize. Now, Curry was also the first person, male or female, to win two Nobel Prizes. And she won them in two different categories. That, my friends, is the science equivalent of the mic drop. Get it, Mary. All right, moving forward, you got this question number five. What band had the 90s smash hit one week? Bare Naked Ladies, Beck, or Creed? Okay, you remember this tune. It was the half-sung, half-wrapped pop culture smorgasbord that included classic lines like Chickity China, the Chinese chicken, yeah? And the creed we're talking about here is the post-grunge band, not the Michael B. Jordan character in the new Rocky movies. He's better known for the other kind of smash hit, like that kind of smash hit. Nobody punches like that. I'm sorry. I take that back. Back to that one. All right. The correct answer is Bare Naked Ladies. Let's see who got Bare Naked Ladies. 6,400. Now, one week is their all-time biggest hit. And poetically, it spent exactly one week at number one in 1998. Now, the band's other claim to fame is performing the theme song for The Big Bang Theory. And as if anyone's ever heard of that show. What is that anyways? All right. Question number six. Which word has anxious connotations? Sequestered, quiet, or disquiet? Now, as you know, and I know, anxious means worried or nervous. But did you know it comes from the same old Norse word as anger? It is true, my friends. That's why they're spelled kind of, sort of similar. The original word actually means tight and painfully constricted. Like that feeling in your chest you get if you're really mad or when someone burns popcorn in the office, yet again. Thanks a lot, Dave. All right, the correct answer is disquiet. Let's see who got disquiet, 5,600, very nice. Now, disquiet is defined as feelings of anxiety or worry, as in, 
I'm going to be honest, I had some disquiet when I first saw this question, but it turns out I totally nailed it. High five. Yeah. Love you guys. All right, question seven. Which of these is a playable word in Words with Friends? Chonk, crunch, or bort? Now to answer your question, no. Chonk, crunch, bort is not the Croatian title of Eat, Pray, Love. Bort are small fragments of diamonds that are used as an abrasive in cutting tools. While chonk and crunch are the kinds of fun sounds you hear at an MMA match, but sadly, no legit words. It's not happening there. All right, the correct answer is bort. Now I guess technically any word is playable, but of those choices, only bort will stick. Now chonk and crunch will get you a slap on the wrist from a word master. Unlike those diamond fragments, they don't quite cut it. And did that last one cut you? Here's where you need that extra life. Just invite a friend to play by tapping the heart on your countdown screen. When they accept, you get an extra life to use in a future game. So invite the masses today and use those extra lives to stay and play. I wrote that. Thank you. All right, question eight. If someone intentionally, intentionally misleads when answering a tough question, they're doing what? Pavanining, prevaricating, or inspissating. Now, we humans lie so regularly, at some point we decided we need specific terms for the different kinds of lying that we do. So, if I lie to grandma, I'm fibbing. If I fake my identity on the web, I'm catfishing. If I evade the truth under questioning, I'm what? What? Oh, uh, sorry. On the advice of my attorney, I exercise my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. All right, the correct answer is prevaricating. Now, to prevaricate is to metaphorically deviate from the right course. Now, the Latin word it comes from literally means to walk crookedly. And that's how we came to call dishonest people crooked. And really dishonest ones, crooks. If you're a crook out there, you know it. All right, question number nine. Which is the longest real word you can write using a single row of a QWERTY computer keyboard? Jargonizing, log -a dolls or pepperwort? I hope you got the answers in there, quickly. All right, this is just one of several keyboard-related factoids you can use to amaze your friends. Now, the longest word you can type with one hand is sweater dresses. The longest word without repeating a letter, unco uncopyrightable. All right, the longest word using just the middle row, shakalshas. That's also what you get when your cat walks across your keyboard. Shakalshas, spells it out for you. All right, and let's see how many people, even though I read it very badly, let's see how many people got this one. I'm gonna tell you the answer first, then I'll tell you how many people. The correct answer is pepperwort. And let's see how many people got pepperwort, 1,900. Even with me, you still did it. Now, pepperwort is a kind of aquatic fern. And I know what you're thinking, I was thinking it too. However, it is not a wart that looks like a jalapeno. And if you have a wart that looks like a jalapeno, see a doctor. All right, question number 10. National debt is to national deficit as total amount owed is to what? Total income contribution, budget shortfall in one year, or total amount expected? Now, since 1973, America has run up a deficit every year except for 1999 and 2000, back when internet stocks were booming and cash was pouring in from sales of low-rise jeans. Now, over the years, all those deficits have added up to a total national debt of $22 trillion. Whew, if we don't turn that around soon, we may have to move back in with our parents. All right, the correct answer is budget shortfall in one year. Let's see how many people got that. 400 people got that. Now, this year's estimated deficit is 1.1 trillion, which includes the 95, 956 billion allocated for military spending. So I say, we cut out military spending altogether. I mean, sure, we might be invaded by Canada, but come on, who doesn't love maple syrup? On a pancake, it's everything. Oh no! And the word around town is that last question was brutal. And if you have an extra life, now is your time to shine. Use that extra life and stay in the game. All right, question 11. Which is the study of crop circles? 
carphology, cryptozoology, or seriology? Which one? Now, cryptozoology literally means the, set, the study of secret animals. It's also what people searching for mysterious creatures like Bigfoot call their hobby to make it sound cool. Now, carphology is when a delirious patient in a hospital starts frantically plucking at their bed linens like you see in horror movies. It also some, it's also sometimes called flossillation. Mm -hmm. So take your creepy pick. You can use either for that. All right, the correct answer is seriology. And like I said on last night's show, seriology only sounds like the study of Cap'n Crunch. In reality, it gets the name from Ceres, the Roman goddess of agri agriculture. Fine. I'm having a hard time letting go of the cereal thing. All right, let's see who got seriology. 1,000 people, very nice. Now, who knew that you had it in you? You're just one right answer away from taking home the cash. It is time for the last question. All right, question 12. Factual is too factitious as authentic is to blank. Spurious, genuine, or precise? Now, before I give you the correct answer, in case you missed last night's show, hit it, James. <laughs> that was my manatee call to call you to play the Manatee Day Weekly Challenge. <laughs> How can you resist its plaintive cries? I know I can't. All right. The results are in. The telegraph has been delivered. The correct answer is spurious. Now, spurious means false or fake. And congratulations to our 12 question clubbers. If you got them all correct, you are in the club and getting some of tonight's $5,000 jackpot. I'm starting to see the winners come up on my screen. Ready, set, speed read. Let's do this. Dave S., you're a winner. Nicholas T., you're a winner. Ladybug7805, you're a winner. Jan Jam 24 I'm proud of you. Eric S., Get it, Eric S. All right, who else? Mary B. Yes, Mary B. Oh, and another Mary B. Two Mary Bs. Wow, it's a good name. That's a lucky name. Michael, I'm proud of you. Chris H., very nice. Nolan Boss Mode. You went into Boss Mode, and you did it. Congratulations. And let's see what they're taking home today. Can I see $12.41? My goodness. You can get a pizza, a couple burritos. Have fun out there. All right, to everyone who played Words with Friends live tonight, we thank you and beseech you to join us again on the morrow. Same place, same app, same grace, and another lucrative treasure map for your mind.